China's real estate bubble is absolutely collapsing. In 2008, when the subprime mortgage crisis nearly ended modern capitalism, housing was 8% of U.S. GDP, while housing is still 25% of China's. This is an epic meltdown and it's just beginning. Meanwhile, in the United States, inflation is so high that the Federal Reserve is talking about raising interest rates further, choking credit out of the economy completely. Gold is perfect for this environment, but it's near all-time highs already. So I want to present a company called Gold Mining Inc., trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker GLDG. This is a company that is extremely cheap. At the end of this video, click on this link in the description box. There's an entire presentation explaining how this company is effectively 80% or 90% more discounted than anything out there. If you're bullish on gold, I urge you to stop everything you're doing and download this carefully drafted report now. Good evening. I'm still reporting on the amazing conclusion of the House Speaker's race today. This is a fantastic hidden story behind why it took so long for the Republicans to select a new Speaker of the House. It was all the machinations of former Speaker Kevin McCarthy working in the deep background to sabotage everyone else's candidacy so that an exhausted Republican Party would either finally have to reelect him again or the worst case scenario where enough rhino votes could have been bought by the K Street lobbyists spending Soros money to put a Democrat in as the speaker. That would have been the end of the United States for sure. This was from Steve Bannon's War Room show earlier today as posted by the Gateway Pundit. This is absolutely brilliant. I want to show you the picture. I'm bringing Matt Gates, Congressman Gates right now, but Mike Johnson, Let's see this again. First thing he did was not go to the sticks, but to call the media into the conference room where they had this intense debate for hours when he was named designee. He bowed his head in prayer with the entire conference in back of him. Bowed his head in prayer to Almighty God. Uh, Matt Gates, it, it was epic, historic, unprecedented. Walk us through it. The crescendo begins as uh, Tom Emmer is withdrawing from the race yesterday. It, it, I told Emmer on Sunday he was not going to get there. He was going to move like a hot knife through butter through about the first, you know, 80 percent of the conference, but that there was going to be a series of votes that were never going to be there for him. He wanted to run through it. And I said, Tom, here's the deal. Uh, you can have your runway. But when you get to that last group that will not support you, you cannot drag this on for days. You cannot drag this on for weeks. You cannot play into what Kevin McCarthy was working the whole time to try to get people to believe that the only person that could govern the Republican conference is Kevin McCarthy. So Emmer agrees that he's going to have his shot, but that it's going to be quick. So we get that through the gestation system uh, early yesterday. So as Emmer is withdrawing, Mark Molinaro, a moderate New York freshman Republican, stands up at the microphone and says, well, instead of restarting this process and having a candidate forum and sending everybody home for a good cry, let's just take a non-binding poll on where people would be on the person who came in second to Tom Emmer, and that was Mike Johnson. And Elise Stefanik said, well, that's against the rules. The, the rules don't contemplate it. We can't do that. And brilliantly, Mark Molinaro says, then I move for unanimous consent that the rules be waived and we take a poll on whether or not Mike Johnson uh, could be our speaker nominee. And guess who objects to that unanimous consent request? Kevin McCarthy. Who was that? Kevin McCarthy stands up oh, and come interrupts on. and says, I object to doing a roll call on Mike Johnson. And Mike Johnson was exasperated. All the times Johnson had voted for McCarthy, had carried his water, maybe even voted for some bills he didn't like because he, he was working toward the Republican conference's stated objectives under McCarthy. And, and here was the thing. It showed everyone that it was actually McCarthy who was working to knife Scalise. It was actually McCarthy who was working to knife Jim Jordan. It was McCarthy working to knife everyone, and he hadn't yet figured out a way to knife Mike Johnson. And so he was worried that there was going to be this great unifying moment, and he scuttled the unifying moment. 
So because of McCarthy's objection, we had to have this three hour delay and, you know, candidates announce again, have another form. And guess what happens during that delay, Steve? Patrick McHenry runs to the House floor, opens it up out of recess and then adjourns till noon today. Now, why did he do that? Because they were setting up a play to block Mike Johnson with write in votes in the intra conference process for Kevin McCarthy. They were promising people hearings on their favorite legislation, passage of bills. I heard people promised, oh, maybe you'll get a, a chairmanship. And, and the play was for McCarthy to return as speaker and then Jim Jordan to be the deputy speaker. And that would have been debasing to Jordan, someone I like a great deal, and it would have been empowering to McCarthy. So Garrett Graves and all these people are working to try to effectuate this return of McCarthy. And they're telling us they're going to be 100 votes for McCarthy on the right in. You know how many there were? 33 on the first right in. So they flame out terribly. Mike Johnson's gaining momentum. Ultimately, my, uh, McCarthy gets 43 to vote for him on a secret ballot. But Mike Johnson gets a majority. And then he says, you know what I want? I want a roll call vote so that those 43 would have to announce themselves as, as being for a candidate who wasn't even running instead of a unifying force like Mike Johnson. And when we called for the roll call, do you know how many people voted for Kevin McCarthy? Zero. He went from four, he went he, zero. So he went from promising 100 votes to delivering 43 to zero willing to vote for him. And everyone in the room knew at that moment that I wasn't the force for chaos. I wasn't causing disunity. That for the last three weeks, the reason the House of Representatives has been paralyzed is because for his own selfish gain, Kevin McCarthy was sabotaging the candidacy of anyone else because he was plotting a return. And we stopped it. And in the place of Kevin McCarthy, we get a Bayou uh, Louisiana Mike Johnson, a brilliant constitutional attorney. He has been my seatmate in the House Judiciary Committee for seven years. For seven years, we have worked against the illegitimate impeachments, against the weaponization of this government. This, is, this guy did the toughest cases before the Louisiana Supreme Court. He is sharp. He will be as respected in the halls of our, uh, in the homes of our most meaningful, righteous, and patriotic donors as he will at the rallies with our most enthusiastic and meaningful activists. It is going to be a great moment for the House. And you know what? At the very end, when some people didn't know if they could still even bring back McCarthy, a few of them just left the room and didn't vote. And the swamp is on the run. That's MAGA is ascendant. And if, if you don't think that moving from Kevin McCarthy to MAGA Mike Johnson shows the ascendance of this movement and where the power in the Republican Party truly lies, uh, then, then you're not paying attention. But they are, they are crying. They are hand wringing and bedwetting over on K Street because we have an honorable, righteous, righteous man uh, who is about to take this position. He's going to do great things for the country. I, I want to make sure we go back to this because of the 20. W once you made the vote, once Mike Johnson said, "I want it on the record," we're not going to go to the floor because because McCarthy's guys blocked it. But I want it on the record here. All four, not not one of the 43 stood up and said, I'm voting for McCarthy, correct? No, and like obviously because McCarthy and Graves and, and these guys were running this because they were out promising the world to people, they voted for McCarthy. But then Kevin McCarthy, after voting on the secret anonymous ballot for himself, then had to stand up and vote for Mike Johnson after his objections had been overrun, after his coalition had, been, had dissolved, and after the sad hopes of a desperate man trying to cling to power were vanquished. This is, I want to go back to the specter. We've called the specter McCarthy has loomed over this entire thing, and the media, the mainstream media refused. They kept saying we were the causes of chaos. This is because the lobbyists, the corporatists, the oligarchs on Wall Street, big tech, have control of him in this apparatus. They've had it yes. now for over a decade, right? right and they right. don't want to give when it up. That was, control, at the end of the day, that's what the fight was about. Right. When they are in control, the American people get chaos. We get chaos with no budgets, with rising debts, with an administrative bureaucratic state that has seemingly no check, with all of these uh, performative resolutions and investigations that don't result in meaningful change for our people. That's chaos. I have tried to bring order out of that chaos. 
And the reason it took me a little longer than expected, the reason it took three weeks instead of three days, is because Kevin McCarthy leveraged the last vestiges of his power to try to block any other human of any other ideology from being able to assume the speakership. And he was defeated. The swamp was defeated. And it would not have happened without this posse. It would not have happened without uh, some some great work from people like Jody Arrington, Clay Higgins, uh, Scott Perry. We we had we had a great team working uh, to give Mike Johnson the support he needed to build a coalition. Uh, Kevin Hearn was an absolute star. Mark Green was the star. Uh, there there is going to be a real opportunity for us to come together. This and is what it is th- on our th- th- terms. Th- this is why it, it is what, their what, surrender this on is our what, terms. Right. This is what Green said when Green dropped out and said he tweeted out. He says their games being played. Those are the games we're talking about. But also, Emmer and Scalise had a role in this. Also, was this was really a unifying moment for the entire conference? Didn't they have a role in this also? Yeah, and I respect these men, and I know they might not be the favorite of your audience. But there was a moment when I went to Emmer and Scalise and I said, "Look, fellas, like now you see it." You see it plain as day that the person who was working against you all along was Kevin McCarthy. And Steve Scalise, like like the Italian godfather, sat in the corner as McCarthy was trying to block his fellow Louisiana and Mike Johnson. And member after member came up to Steve Scalise and he would give them advice and counsel people, respect Steve so much and listen to him. And you watched Steve Scalise put the final dagger in the heart of the hopes of Kevin McCarthy's return. And it was a beautiful chef's kiss because Steve Scalise actually was not treated fairly during this process. Kevin did everything he could to hurt Steve. And the fact that Steve now gets to put Mike Johnson in that chair uh, over Kevin McCarthy's attempted comeback is is glorious. Another Louisiana. Uh, real quick, I know you got to b- bounce, but you in your seven years as as the wingman with uh, with Johnson, he's very focused on the administrative state. He's very focused on the deep state. He's very as a constitutionalist. He's beyond upset about what's happened to DOJ. Walk me through what do you think that's going to take as far as the speakership? Well, Mike Johnson lashes a technical proficiency to go after the administrative state with a real desire and willingness to do so. We have said some people demonstrate great proficiency, but maybe not as much willingness. And then some people aren't willing at all. Mike Johnson sees the weaponized administrative state for what it is. The best questioning that I've seen from any member on any subject in the 118th Congress was last year when Mike Johnson pinned Merrick Garland down on critical race theory and the fact that his own son-in-law was profiting off of it and Garland was then serving as the muscle. It, It was exquisite. So this guy knows what to do. He is a tactician and I will be right by his side doing everything possible to see that Mike Johnson is successful, to see that the House of Representatives is successful in our oversight goals and ultimately that the American people are successful. The other thing, Trump and Mike Johnson get along so well. You'll remember back in one of the impeachments of yesteryear, Mike Johnson was actually on the Trump defense team, uh, driving a lot of the message and a lot of the legal strategy that was ultimately successful in the Senate. It starts at high noon. I hear Elise Stefan is going to put his name in nomination. Uh, uh, Matt, where do people go on social media to follow you? Because it's going to be an intense day. We're not yeah, going to be yet. Brit- I'm going to be breaking down uh, more detail on how this developed and even uh, what we're doing now to ensure that we lock down those last votes on my podcast, Firebrand, that people can find on Rumble, on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts. Also, at Matt Gates at Rep Matt Gates anywhere on the Internet. I do a pretty good job letting you know what's happening. Ah, this is this is what victory feels like, man. We got we got more to do, but uh, I've I've told you in the past, and I've told the audience in the past, don't celebrate yet. You know what? You deserve this. You deserve this moment when this godly good man takes this position, and we you we we can finally show you what a fighting Republican Party in control of the House of Representatives looks like. I have not seen that in seven years under McCarthy and Paul Ryan. We finally get a chance with Mike Johnson. This is a great day. And a big thanks to my wife, Beth, for taking the time to watch all of this longer content because I don't have the time to watch it, then put the good stuff in front of my face. Also, a huge salute to Gates and Bannon and all the real Republicans who helped them for ferreting out exactly who was behind this plot, then exposing them. Let's hope that Kevin McCarthy's constituents in California deal with him appropriately in the next election. 
God bless America, and thank you, Father God, for preserving this country once again. Remember, Beth's audio-only podcast broadcasts at 1 p.m. every Saturday on the Truth Be Told radio network, followed later that afternoon by a video version on our Rumble channels. We are still reporting from just outside the citadel of world freedom. Good day.